All right, in this video, we're going to look at taking some partial derivatives of a function of two variables. Uh, the function we're looking at, f of x, y, is x times y over x minus y. Uh, let's start with our partial derivative of f with respect to x. So we can write that as partial f, partial x, or f with a subscript x. And we'll be taking the derivative with respect to x, so treating y as a constant. X appears in the numerator and denominator, so we use the quotient rule, which has this take the derivative of the top derivative of xy with respect to x is y times the bottom x minus y minus the top xy times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x, which is 1, all over the denominator squared. And then if we uh, distribute here, we get xy minus y squared, and then minus xy. So the xy's add to 0, um, and we get our simplified result, uh, negative y squared over x minus y squared. Now we're going to take the second order partial derivatives of this result. Uh, we'll stick with x first and do a second partial derivative with respect to x. So partial squared f, partial x squared, or f x x. So this is the x partial derivative of of that result. So instead of writing it as a fraction, um, since x only appears in the denominator, I can write it using a negative exponent and then avoid using the quotient rule. You can use the quotient rule, it's just still work. Um, so again, x is our derivative of variable differentiation. Um, so negative y squared is a constant, uh, multiply by the exponent negative two, and you'll get positive two y squared. Uh, and then the new exponent is one less, and then there's no chain rule effect since the derivative of the inside is one. And we can go uh, back to rational notation and write that as 2y squared over x minus y cubed. Right. And now we're going to go back to the result from step one and take the what's called the mixed partial derivative. So this is a second order partial derivative of f um, with respect to x first and then y. So when you have the Leibniz notation, you read the order from right to left. And then in the subscript notation, you read the order from left to right. But we are doing a, a y derivative. So mentally, you want to shift gears and think now of y as your variable of differentiation and x as the constant, which means we're back to using the quotient rule. Uh, derivative of the top is negative 2y times the bottom x minus y squared uh, times the top which is negative y squared times the, oh, sorry, it's minus the top, um, which would be plus, oh, so minus uh, the top, which is minus negative y squared. Let's just write it like that. Um, and then times the derivative of the bottom, with respect to y, which is 2 times x minus y times negative 1. So you actually get three negatives there, and it'll end up being negative. And that's all times the denominator squared. x minus y squared squared is x minus y to the fourth. All right, so let's simplify this. Uh, and I think we're going to need two steps. So let's expand the x minus y squared first. So that'll be x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. 
And then combining the three negatives, you get plus, <laughs> Jeez. you get minus, three negatives gives you a negative. Um, and then there's a two and a y squared. And that's times x minus y. And that's just the numerator. The denominator is simplified. All right. And then let's do some distributing here. Um, so that'll give us negative 2x squared y. That'll give us plus 4xy squared, and then negative 2y cubed, and then negative 2xy squared, and finally, positive 2y cubed. So we have a negative 2y cubed and a positive 2y cubed that add to 0. And we have a 4x squared minus a 4xy squared minus a 2xy squared. That will give us a 2xy squared. So we got negative 2x squared y and positive 2xy squared. Uh, there's a common factor there of negative, well, negative if you want, but 2xy. We'll factor the negative, and that will give us an x minus y. And then the x minus y factor on the top will cancel with 1 on the bottom. Uh, giving us our simplified result, negative 2xy over x minus y cubed. All right, so that's the second order mixed partial, um, x first, then y. So that's half of these done. Let's go on to steps four, five, and six. You can do these in a different order if you want. So with step four, we're actually going back to the original function. So I'll rewrite that here. Uh, x, y over x minus y. And we're taking the derivative, partial derivative of f with respect to y, partial f, partial y, f partial y. So again, using the quotient rule, uh, using y as our variable of differentiation, uh, derivative of the top with respect to y is x times the bottom is x minus y minus the top x y times the derivative of the bottom with respect to y, which is negative one, all over the denominator squared. And then when we uh, distribute, we get x squared minus x y plus x y. So the xy's cancel, and we just get x squared over x minus y squared. So there's the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Uh, now we're going to take that result, and we're going to do the second order partials. I just like to stick. I like to shift between my variable of differentiation as little as possible um, because I think that's hard to do mentally. And so I'm going to continue with y derivatives and take the second partial of f with respect to y. Since y is only a denominator, we can do what we did in step two and write this with a negative exponent and avoid the quotient rule. So we get the negative two times the x squared times x minus y, new exponent is one less. Derivative of the inside is a negative one. So the negatives will cancel. 
And in the rational notation, we'd have 2x squared over x minus y cubed. All right, last one. Uh, we're going to go back to the result from step four, and we're going to do an x derivative. So this is the other second order mixed partial. y first, then x. We are doing an x derivative of x squared over x minus y squared. So we need the quotient rule again. Uh, derivative of the top is, with respect to x is 2x times the bottom, x minus y squared, minus the top, minus x squared, times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x, which is 2 times x minus y. So I didn't need a fraction bar that long. All over denominator squared, x minus y to the fourth. All right, let's simplify that numerator. Let's do the expanding of x minus y squared x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And then uh, this is just minus 2x squared times x minus 1. And then let's distribute. So that's going to be two x cubed. That's going to be negative four x squared y, positive two x y squared, negative two x cubed, and positive two x squared y. Denominator hasn't changed. Uh, we have some opposite terms again. The 2x cubed and the negative 2x cubed add to zero. So those are gone. Um, and then we have a negative 4x squared y and a positive 2x squared y. Those will combine and give us a negative 2x squared y. Uh, and then there's a positive 2xy squared. And we can factor negative 2xy again. And that'll give you x minus y. And again, the x minus y factor cancels. And we get the same result as step three. Now, you might be wondering, well, we always get the same result with the mixed partials, right? Well, that was covered in the lecture a little bit. Um, that happens according to Clairaut's theorem. Uh, when the when the second derivatives themselves are continuous. Uh, or is it first derivatives? Let's see, they're off their own. Yeah, so the you need those those mixed second order mixed partials, the results from steps three and six to be continuous um, for this to work. Now ours aren't continuous everywhere, right? They're they're discontinuous whenever the denominator is zero, um, which does occur uh, when y is equal to x. So along the line y equals x, they're discontinuous, um, but everywhere else they're continuous. And so at all those other points, we would expect these to match up. So you can't really rely on Clairaut's theorem completely because of the discontinuity, um, but we would expect these to match up anywhere the function is continuous. So most of the time that will happen, um, but beware of discontinuities.
All right. Now, that's one technique of validation. Uh, the other is to just check first order partial derivatives in general. Um, and the way I usually check an analytic derivative is with Euler's method. So just a little bit on the theory of Euler's method here. Um, let's take a test function. Y equals X squared. Um, and then let's Let's say we're going to use the derivative to check a point. You need to pick some kind of starting point. So we'll pick the starting point, 1, 1. And then you need to find the derivative there and use that tangent line to move forward a little bit. So the way that would look. as we would have the tangent line at this point. And you kind of think of that as being the slope of these infinitesimals, delta x and delta y. So to try to make this match up with the notation in the handout, we're starting this initial point, um, x0, f0, where we know everything is correct. Uh, and then we move forward some small amount in the x direction, we're calling that delta x. Sometimes it's called h. And then that gives us some change in the y value, delta y. And we get our new point uh, where the x coordinate is x naught plus delta x. And the y coordinate is f naught plus delta y. Now, if we do this a small amount, we can compare that with the actual value, right? Which has the same x coordinate, um, but has the correct y value. And you look for these to be close. If your derivative is way off, then that line will head in the wrong direction and you will be way off in your approximation. Now that gap looks pretty big, um, but I've exaggerated it, right? Really delta x is small. And so if you look kind of here close to the point, Um, you can see that the tangent line and the curve itself are indistinguishable, right? And so that's the kind of step size we would actually take. All right, now we pick delta x, but we want to know what delta y is. Um, remember the derivative kind of sets the slope. And so the derivative can be thought of as delta y over delta x. And so delta y, which we want to know, is just delta x times the derivative. So we'll put in our derivative there and uh, multiply by delta x. That'll give us a new delta y. And then, of course, we'll add it to the original y value. And so this is the notation that you'll see in our Euler's method calculation. So pick a point, pick a little step forward in the x direction use our derivative to see how that makes a change in the y value, and then compare that with the actual y value. Um, now this is for a function of one variable. We're doing this uh, for a function of two variables. So x will be x and then it'll be y, and we're actually looking at changing in z values. Um, hopefully all that isn't too much. And hopefully you've seen Euler's method in one dimension or in two dimensions, and so this makes it a little easier. All right, so 
This is just for checking the results from steps one and four. Right, we kind of check the results from steps three and six. Um, and so we want to start with whatever that derivative is. There's our partial derivative. And then we need to pick some point. Um, you can't pick zero, zero because it's not in the domain of this function, but try to pick simple small numbers. Um, F, which I guess we'll put the function itself here. Uh, F of zero, one does indeed work. And uh, if X is zero and Y is one, um, then you get zero. So that's our starting point. Now you can choose whatever you want for delta x, um, but that will kind of affect how accurate our approximation is. I find that uh, one thousandth is kind of a sweet spot. Some folks like to use a hundredth. Some folks like to use something like ten to the negative six. Um, but I, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, and then we take f zero. Right, which which actually is that initial z value. Uh, and we add on delta x times the partial derivative uh, at that point. So we do need to evaluate that partial derivative function. So f0 is 0, and then 0 0.001, that's our delta x. And then we're replacing x with 0 and y with 1 in our partial derivative. So negative one squared, zero minus one squared. And that ends up being negative one. Of course, you do want to solve on a calculator. Um, and I didn't really have a name for this thing. F1 is supposed to be the exact value kind of awaiting calling this anything. This is our approximation. This is the point according to the tangent line. And then we compare that with the actual value F1, um, which is the value of the function at uh, zero plus delta X one. So we only moved in the X direction, right? So instead of putting in zero for X, we put in 0 0.001 and we use the original function. So and uh, in then put that in a calculator and you'll get 0, 0, 001 repeating over and over. So these won't match up exactly. Um, but you're looking for them to agree roughly to the order of magnitude of delta x, uh, because Euler's theorem is a first order theorem, so it, its error should be on the order of delta x. So since that's delta x is like three decimal places, we expect these to match up with three decimal places. Right? Again, this is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So they're not exactly right, but they do agree up to three decimal places. So that lets you know that you are right. If this was positive or just anything, you know, different from negative 0 0.001 and some change, um, then we would know we had made a mistake with our partial derivative. So uh, it's a little bit of an advanced technique, but I think it's a really good one to use over and over. It's what I use to verify analytic derivatives in Calc 1, um, if you took that with me. And, and of course, you might not have time for that on an exam, but you could use Clairaut's theorem um, in those cases. All right, let's do the other one real quick. And so for that, we need the partial derivative with respect to y. And we see this one's going to be a little different. So I have x squared over x minus y squared. Uh, we're going to use the same point, f 
of 0, 1 equals 0. But now, the, instead of a delta x, we pick a delta y. I pick the same number. But 0, 0, 1. And, and then we do f0 plus delta y times the y derivative at 0, 1. So again, the point zero one, just kind of a simple point. You can you use one one zero zero, um, simple points like that most of the time. But if the function is not defined there, then you can't really do that, right? Uh, so it's still zero. This is still zero zero one, um, but this is different, right? This is zero squared over zero minus one squared, and so this gives us zero. Right, so in fact, there's sort of a horizontal tangent in that direction, um, and we got a slope of zero, so we're just going to not change the value at all, um, and we should see that reflected in this as well. So f1 should be f1, and the difference here is we add the delta y to the y value, right? And we're using the original function, but now x is 0 and y is 0 0.001. Of course, that gives you 0. So they may match up exactly, right? Um, that's possible. It's, it's not necessarily a problem. Um, you should probably think through it and make sure it makes sense if they match up exactly. But most of the time, they will match up approximately, like we had in the case of moving in the x direction. Um, but that validates the result from step four. Um, so you could adapt this technique and validate the results from steps two and five. Um, but that's enough validation here. I feel like you'll catch most of your mistakes uh, using what we did here. So um, that'll be it for partial derivatives. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. We're looking at tangent planes.